Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Janet from another planet. Is anybody freezing in this place? Okay, I want to make sure you see the ensemble. From another planet. Okay, uh, my name Janet from Another Planet, Satori told you, and I'm going to tell you a story called Big Moore. Now, Big Moore is a story from 1976, the year of the bicentennial. It was also the year that my son started school for a full day, so I was celebrating that. <laughs> <laughs> And it was, a, it was a nice day. It was a September day, not quite as hot as it is today, but it was a nice September day, and I was just cherishing the idea of having it all to myself. And then the phone rings. It's the school. Now, my little boy, he's just, he's the cutest little thing. He's just only that big. He's just... <laughs> Okay, little red-headed thing. And, you know, he just <laughs> didn't really, he, did, he didn't really do anything really bad. And so he, okay, okay, thank you, okay. It's making me dizzy being this close. Okay, so anyway, it's the, school, it's the school secretary calling, and she said I needed to come in and talk with the principal right now. And I'm like, right now? Okay, I go home, brush my teeth again. I put my long hippie hair in a ponytail. I, uh, I get in the car, and I, and I start thinking to myself, what in the hell could he do? I mean, it's only been two or three days, you know? I'm like, shit, shit, son of a bitch. What is this? God. So I'm driving as slow as I can, but it's the elementary school. It ain't that far away. And so I pull into the parking lot, and I go in to the office, and I say, hello, I'm Mrs. Wood. I'm here to see Principal Hudson. Whoa. Apparently, it could possibly be me. <laughs> God, she wouldn't even look at me. I go into the principal's office. He says, have a seat, Mrs. Wood. I sat down. He's behind this massive desk, and I'm in front of it. Okay. He says, would you like to see what your son brought for show and tell? I said, no, thank you. <laughs> We both had a little chuckle, haha. -ha. He opens the drawer of his big desk, pulls out a bag of weed. Okay. I mean, not a big bag, you know. In and, and those days, it was called a lid. It was about $10 worth. Yeah. <laughs> he takes this bag, he takes this bag, and he kind of tosses it to me. And he says, uh, yeah, that's what your son brought for show and tell. And he stood up and uh, told, you know, the whole class. And um, he's, I'm, I'm sitting there going, just dumbfounded. I'm like, are the police at my house? Are they coming here? <laughs> did you give me, did you throw this bag of weed over here? Because it'll be sitting in front of me when they come. He reaches over and he grabs the bag back. And he stands up from his desk, and he puts the bag down on the floor by his foot. He says, oh, that's not all. Uh-huh. He says, your son told his teacher and the whole class, my daddy's got big more at home, big more, big more at home. Now I'm like, oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, God. And uh, I, start, I just started babbling, you know. I'm like, well, you know, he really doesn't know it's illegal. We're all a bunch of hippies, and we all smoke pot. And all of our kids, they just don't know because we don't tell them. And why bother? And, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he says, uh, 
are you done, Mrs. Wood? Are you done? And I said, uh-huh. <laughs> He said, uh, I, he, I, I said, but you know, it really isn't his fault. He said, Mrs. Wood, I am the principal of an elementary school. Do you really think that I think that it's your six-year-old son's fault? <laughs> he said, we both know whose fault it is. He said, it's your fault and it's your husband's fault. That's what it is. And I said, Nothing, because I figured anything I did say could and would be held against me in a court of law. And so, and I'm not usually quiet. And so, uh, but he says, here is what's going to happen. He said, you are going to go home and you are going to make a significant storage solution for whatever it is you people have over there. I don't know. And then he hands me the bag of pot back, and he says, and you are going to have a talk with both your husband and your son about marijuana and that it's illegal and that especially when he tells people that his daddy has big more at home, <laughs> that that could send his daddy to big jail for some big time. <laughs> he said, now, you need to figure that out, and uh, you need to just go on now. <laughs> Gives me the bag of pot back. I'm like, are they in the parking lot? <laughs> what? <laughs> so I, he says I can go, man, I'm out of there like a rocket. And I get in my car, and I'm driving home, and I'm saying, Oh, thank you, thank, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you so much. And so, and I get home, and, you know, I'm thinking that I can just, you know, clean this stuff up, yeah, and, but I don't know where it's all at, you know, it's, it's, that's the old man shit, you know, and uh, so, anyway, I have to wait for him to come home. Did we have cell phones in 1976? No. Okay. So I have to wait for my son to come home on the bus and send him over to the other hippie house across the street and tell her, give her a short synopsis of what happened to me this afternoon. So please don't be smoking no joints and stuff for right now. You know, we'll figure it out later, but I got to go buy a padlock. Okay. So... <laughs> I went, I went and bought a padlock, and I brought it back, and by that time, my husband was just getting home, dropped off from work, and he came in the house, and I told him, oh, I've had a truly wonderful day. I'm so glad you're home. Where's the rest of your shit? <laughs> Stevie brought pot to school for show and tell. <laughs> and then he told the whole class that his daddy had big more at home. So I said, you know what? I don't know what the deal is with this principal. I said, you know, I, he's a very nice man. This could have gone really sideways badly. He gave me the little bag of pot to bring home, told me to get you and get our shit cleaned up and put it up somewhere. And then we have to sit down and talk with our son. And I said, so we need to be really thankful that this man didn't take another track on what he found at show and tell that day. And so we did. We cleaned the hell out of that house, and we put the, we put the pot in a toolbox with a padlock, put it up on the top shelf of the garage, covered it with a tarp. I mean, just, you know, <laughs> you know. If they find it, God bless them, you know? I mean, really. So anyway, and then we brought our son, my little baby dumpling. We brought him. I went and got him from across the street, and we talked about marijuana and, and how it's illegal, and he was just shocked. He was flabbered. What do you mean? What, do you, what, what? I said, no, honey, you know, it really is. It's illegal. And I said, and, and you know, People do it, adults do things that, you know, they do them and they don't, they know they're wrong, but they don't want to get caught and they keep doing them, you know. <laughs> he said, 
And he's not even talking. He's just, his little, he's snuggled up in his dad's big arm, you know, and I'm blah, 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 my usual. And, you know, and then I said, and the, and the thing that was really difficult, honey, was when you told the whole class that your daddy had big more at home. And his, and his, and, and he, his lip was quivering and my lip was quivering and we got the same quiver. And, and he says, he says, but I did, didn't know, you know, I didn't know. And, and now he's got a little tear coming down. Now I'm bawling. <laughs> now his dad's got to take over. But listen, the principal and the teacher, they, do, they know it's not your fault. They know it's mom and dad's fault. They know it that we are to tell you that, we are very sorry for doing this to you, that this is totally our fault. And, and it's like we set you up. And we won't, and, and, and we're not going to say that we're not going to smoke any more marijuana. But, but adults do things in their own houses that everybody else doesn't have to know about. So you don't need to worry about it because the principal's got it handled, and you don't need to talk about it ever again anymore, okay? <laughs> and he's like, and I'm holding him, and he's crying, I'm crying, and now Dad's holding. And, you know, I mean, it just was the, the whole thing of the CPS. There was no Child Protective Services. There was no, nobody, that was, that was the principal. That was the teacher. That was the, that was the school nurse and the mean ass secretary. <laughs> okay, all of them. And you know, and it worked. And, and like I told my, my husband, you know, this could have come out so much worse. I mean, you could have been in jail. You know, while we were cleaning, we, I was discussing this with him, trying to get him to come. Hey, are you listening? And so, anyway, so we're going to fast forward to now, okay? Now weed, you can get weed anywhere. Weed is legal, okay? We got Child Protective Services. We got CPS. But how do we protect our children now? How do we protect our children against violence, against gun violence? How do we protect them against, against domestic violence, against teen, teen and child suicide, against gangs, against school shooters? How do we do that? We better start doing something, okay? And, and when Uvalde and Oxford happened, I asked God, I prayed to God, I said, God, please, what can one person do? What can one person do? What can, what can I do to make a difference? And as he almost always does, he showed me. I swim at the YWCA, YMCA. I, don't, I ain't no 12, though. <laughs> <laughs> and I swim three times a week. <laughs> But it's a very good place to meditate and pray. I walked out of the YMCA, and there's a little vestibule. And on the vestibule, there were some magazines. I'm sure most of you have heard of Metro Parent. The July-August edition of Metro Parent, it was a black cover with white letters that said, gun violence is the leading cause of death in children in the United States. Yep, yep. And um, there's a story inside by Paris Giles, or Giles, I'm not sure, and it's called Innocence Lost. And it has got some outstanding information and some very good ideas and very good organizations that you can join, um, different laws that they want to try to pass, uh, number one being banning these assault rifles. Okay. Right. And Satori's going to tell you more about that. 
But um, I am going to say, if this, I know this is very serious, what I'm talking about right now. But since Chris Rock is in town, I am going to tell you his solution. Give him all guns. Give him all guns. Give him. Every bullet is $5,000. <laughs> That's his solution. So I, I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Peace out. Janet from another planet, also known as Janet Reagan. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>